Hello YouTube, Proxy here, and today Ashes of Creation's video is all about caravans. Wait, no 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 no, not that type of caravan, this type of caravan. But before we begin, I need a disclaimer, many of the mechanics in Ashes of Creation are still being discussed internally. And while the design of the game has been established, playtesting of the mechanics in game systems can lead to many concepts so far to be subject to change. Well, with that out of the way, let's get right into it and talk about the caravan system. Caravans will have three main purposes in-game. Quests in which you escort materials to build nodes, the transferal of resources and materials between marketplaces, and to build up certain buildings in certain areas of the game. The caravan system is possibly the second most important system in-game as it works in synergy with the node system, and much like the node system is heavily tied to many other features of Ashes. PvP, PvE, trading, gathering, crafting will all be linked to this system and provide fun and easily accessed content for both hardcore and casual players. Well, how does this system work? Well, first off, let's explain that there isn't going to be a global auction house in Ashes of Creation. Instead, we will see nodes which in turn turn into towns, cities, villages and outposts. And these will basically have their own individual marketplaces. Now, in my last video about nodes, I explained how nodes worked and how that when you explore the world, you will find groups of nodes. And from these nodes, you will construct cities and various other things. Well, this group of nodes will be known as a region, and it is important not only for the caravan system, but it's also linked to the crafting, gathering and trading systems. Now, these regions will be broken down into tiers, and these tiers will define not only what resource you can find in the region, but also what goods you will be able to ship via caravans, as well as what you can craft in those regions. So let me give you an example of how this works. Let's say you mine out 1000 iron ore which can only be found in tier 1 regions. That ore must be crafted into iron bars but only in tier 2 regions, which then can only be used in making different grades of plate armor in tier 3, 4, 5, 6 regions. Caravans will be the only route by which you can transit these goods from region to region since a player's carrying capacity for these goods are extremely limited. So this means that in order to craft the best gear in game, not only will players need to expand the world but recolonize cities in higher tier regions, and will need to gather materials from lower tier regions and keep shipping them to the frontier to reach the higher tier regions. Not to mention the reverse will be true as well, resources that are found in higher tier regions will have to be sent back to lower tier regions to be crafted. This system is going to be very important for crafters, and people who are full time crafters might experience a level of power and influence they may not used to be having from other games. Even if you are the biggest and most badass guild on the server, you are going to need crafters supporting you, crafters that might be upset if you keep poaching their resources from caravans. However, this video is about caravans and not crafting, so I will leave this for another video, so let's get back on subject before I derail myself. Now, in Arcage, when you did a trade run, you could easily be ganked, and your only defense against a ganker or a PK would literally be yourself or your friends or your guild if they could get to you in time. In Ashes of Creation, however, fast travel is extremely limited. No portal style system or fast travel system like in Arcage, which means during a caravan run in Ashes, your guild might not be able to get to you quickly if it's under attack. But it also means it's going to be harder for enemy guilds to zerg you down. Also, caravans come with various levels of protection in the form of guards. How many guards a caravan will get will depend on a number of different factors. The side of the node from which the caravan is launched, if the node falls under the influence of a castle, if the player has purchased additional guards, and what the elected node officials determine to be allocated to the caravan guard system. Caravans will potentially include PvE disturbances along the route, depending on its destination, status of local quest lines for the area, and the size of the node the caravan was originating from. These guards will help you defend your caravan from both players and PvE elements of the world, however this is not the only defense against player bandits. So how does the PvP work in the caravan system? Well, when the caravan starts to move out from a city, a static radius will be created around the caravan. Anyone entering it will automatically be flagged for PvP and be killable. Now, chances are if you are doing a run alone, you might run into trouble if you meet a larger group of player bandits. However, the game takes this into account. Players will be able to register for caravan escort duty within the node region, and before it sets off, the caravan owner can select people to join on its journey. 
During the journey, they will be unable to attack the caravan, the owner, the other defenders until the destination is reached. And once the destination is reached, they will earn a reward. But what if the caravan already left, and you see it's under attack and you want to help defend it? Well, if you walked inside the caravan radius, you would be seen as a hostile and attacked. However, outside the PvP radius of the caravan will be a non-combat NPC that you can talk to and instead join the caravan defense. But you won't be able to do this until the caravan is at least reached halfway through the journey. This system basically fixes a couple of problems that are present in other MMOs. In general, when battlegrounds are added to an MMO, they often kill open world PvP because it's easier to get PvP by joining a battleground than it is to go out and search for it. Well, Ashes of Creation kind of fixes this problem by basically making the caravan system also act as some kind of open world battleground, allowing players to make money while having fun and PvPing. And to be honest, this sounds like a great concept to me. The other issue was part of Arcage's trade runs, that people doing risky trade runs were often greatly disadvantaged because bandit-like players would often have portals to easily get to your location with friends and outnumber you. And secondly, your cart would be easily destroyed leaving you with no way to recover your packs without help being somewhere nearby. This actually made being a bandit too easy, a lifestyle that is supposed to be rough. Well, Ashes fixes that problem again by having an NPC escort and player escorts being able to join in as easily as it would be to join an instanced battleground not to mention rewarding players for doing so. So okay, let's say you are a bandit and you have won the caravan battle, what happens? Well, once the caravan is destroyed, it simply becomes a wreckage, which will be a lootable object, to which the only players that entered the hostile PvP zone will be able to loot. However, it's important to know that the destruction of the caravan will cause some of the original assets to be lost. Well, it looks like the caravan system is a well thought out system indeed. It's impressive how much thought they put into this one. They have clearly seen the flaws in other MMOs when it has come to open world PvP and trading in general. And it's pretty awesome that they are not only making open world PvP meaningful, but the crafters, gatherers and traders have much more interactive and important roles because of this caravan system. And while this game offers many more features than caravans, the caravan system is definitely one of the reasons I want to play this game. Though the question remains, will I be a bandit or a defender? Which side would you pick? Leave your comments in the section below. Also, I would like to thank Intrepid Games and Steven Shara for providing me with all this information this week. You guys are doing an amazing job with your new game, so keep it up and keep impressing us as you go. Well, that's it for the topic on caravans. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did and want to see more videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can also support this channel and the videos that I make by using my referral link below but I have provided a referral-less link in case you don't. And as always guys, thanks for watching.